So you want to complete Archero Chapter 5, Lost Castle. Well, you've come to the right place. This is what I started with before beginning Chapter 5. I had lower level items, different rarities, and I was level 34. So as you can see, 7 levels later, I finally completed the chapter. In this guide, I will be running through with you on how to beat the bosses and monsters of Chapter 5. I will be leaving in my opinion the best abilities for this chapter as well as the abilities I picked up through RNG on the left and right. With that, let's get to it. So for our starting abilities, we have diagonal arrows, side arrows and ricochet. I think we're definitely going to pick up ricochet here. The other two abilities are good if you have bouncy wall. However, ricochet, I would say overrides those two abilities. Okay, so let's get into level one. Okay, so here we're dealing with the laser bats. The laser bats are pretty easy to deal with. You just basically want to sidestep it. Um, I killed them pretty fast here, so it's a bit hard to show you. I will put another bit of footage here to show you how to do it. But basically, you just want to step to the side, let the attack set in, and then step to the side again, as you can see here. We're going to pick a multi-shot. Multi-shot is something you definitely want to have 100%. So far in every chapter, I think it's the best ability so far. Um, as you can see, we have the skeleton guys and the purple monsters. They're pretty straightforward. With the skeleton guys, they just are always trying to chase you. Basically, just wanting to hit you. They do run as well, which, which can be pretty annoying. Um, you want to kill them as fast as you can because they can do some pretty hefty damage. Um, for the purple guys, uh, they're also pretty straightforward. They, they shoot out a purple projectile. And with that purple projectile, it is absorbed by the wall. We have headshot, bouncy wall, and freeze. We're going to pick up bouncy wall here in the hopes that we get diagonal arrows or side arrows. But hopefully diagonal arrows because that ability works best with this ability. Okay, here we have the skeleton guys and the laser bats. So as you can see, you just have to step to the side basically. So let the attack set in. You never want to run with the lines on you, like you want to let the line set in with the laser bats because if you let the line, if you run with the line, it actually gives you less room to avoid it. So you want to let it set in and then just take a step and move out of the way. Now I, I cleared this level pretty easy, but this level before I got pretty strong was actually really hard to do because I was cornered a lot. And you definitely don't want to let yourself be cornered in this chapter because the skeletons can make it really hard for you to avoid the projectiles. We have attack speed, attack boost, and fire circle. We're going to pick up attack boost for more damage here. In this chapter, you definitely want a lot of damage. You want to kill the enemies as fast as you can. So we have a lot of bats here. You basically want to sidestep it. Luckily, the bats are pretty easy to kill, which is really, really nice. So on to our first boss. So we have the dog boss. So the dog boss is really, really easy. So I kill him pretty fast here, but basically he always dashes three times. On his third dash, you can hit him twice before moving out of the way. When he jumps on you, you can hit him about two to three times before moving out of the way. That's basically what you want to do. And as you could see before, I was always running uh, diagonally. That's because if you run straight, you're more likely to get hit by him. So always run diagonally and basically just follow his pattern. So here we have the archer, I don't even know what they're called, but they're pretty easy to kill because they don't move, they stay still. And basically with those, they like the bats, except they they have a sh they shoot faster. Uh, oh, for here we're going to pick up side arrows since we have bouncy wall. So with, the, with these um, archers, you just want to basically step to the side. Like once the line is on you, just step to the side. You don't want to run with it. Like basically just like hit them once or step to the side. So as you can see, bouncy wall and side arrows is proving to be very nice here. I'm killing them really fast all at the same time, which is really nice. So just more of the same guys. As, I, as you can see, I'm just stepping to the side. So basically, if you see, I have like every time there's a red arrow on me, I just step to the side very quickly. And you can see sometimes I take a few steps. I, I kind of take like, depending if there's like, for example, if there's three arrows pointing at me, I take three steps to the side. Okay, so these guys are really easy. Um, they don't shoot directly at you. You basically just have to like just watch your character to avoid the projectile to, bleh, to avoid the projectile. Sorry. Okay, here we're gonna pick up piercing shot because piercing shot works really nice with bouncy wall. 
Okay, so with these guys, as I was saying with the rock spinny guys, um, they don't shoot, they don't, they don't aim for you. So you just want to avoid them just by looking at your character. If you watch your character, it's way easier to avoid projectiles because if you're looking at the enemy, you're actually not paying attention to other projectiles. So we just have more of the arrow guys here. Very easy, you just gotta step to the side. Not very hard, depending on how many lines there are, I, that's how many steps I take. Just gonna kill all these arrow guys here. As you can see, Ricochet is really, really nice because the enemies are very close together. Now we're already up to our second boss and we have another ability. We're gonna pick up attack speed boost here for more DPS so we can kill them quicker. I didn't pick up crit because apparently there is a, gl uh, a glitch with crit at the moment. I'm not sure how true that is. And with this arrow guy, the bigger arrow guy, it's basically the same thing. You just wanna step, step to the side. So once the red line is on you, just step to the side very quickly. I did get hit a few times here because sometimes it can get a bit, a, can get a bit confusing, but it's fine. Okay, so here we have some more XP. That's nice. The faster we get to level 8, the next ability we get. Okay, these guys are the hardest, the hardest monsters of every chapter I've had so far. So as you can see, I killed them really quick, but what you want to do with them basically is you never want to stay still. You want to take a few hits. If you kill them slowly, like as you can see, I'm killing them very fast right now because I have more damage, but when I first started this chapter, I died to them like straight away. Like I just was like, what was that? So basically with them, you just want to step to the side quickly. Um, it can be a bit hard to see the to see their scythes because of how dark this chapter is. Okay, here we're gonna pick up front arrow. Multi-shot and front arrow is honestly my go-to's for every chapter. But as I was saying with the Grim Reapers, um, you don't wanna stay in the same place for too long. And you don't want to go back to that same place too quickly. So basically, I kind of just walk along the walls when I'm fighting them. Because with the, with the Grim Reapers, their attacks go uh, to you and then go back. And you don't want to be caught in the middle. You always just want to, you just want to avoid them as much as you can and try and kill them as fast as possible. And this is why Bouncy Wall, Ricochet, Diagonal Arrows is really good for that because... Sometimes it's really hard to just aim for what you what you what you want to kill. And you don't want to be stuck in corners because it's going to be very hard to avoid them. But do keep in mind that walls, they do bounce off walls, so if you can hide behind a wall against the Grim Reapers, that would be very very good for you. Okay, so here we're just avoiding the bats. So as you can see, I'm running with a death scythe. With a death scythe, it can be a bit confusing because there is a very big um, knockback with the death scythe and it can sometimes push the laser bats into a position that you don't want them in. Okay, here we have the plant guy. He is the hardest, the hardest mini boss uh, so far of every chapter. So basically, as you can see, you just want to avoid his, um, I killed him pretty quick, which was really nice, which is what you want. But as you can see, he spawns little plants around. You always want to kill the little plants that are, that are in front of you. You don't want to go for the back ones, that's fine because they're very far away. And we're just going to pick up Bloodthirst here for some life steal because the other two abilities are meh. And with the plant guy, so basically when he throws the ball, you kind of want to just like go to the opposite side and pause and then like wait for it to pop, basically. Very, very easy. It took me a very long time though to get it and I still die to him sometimes. Like he's not... He's not a boss that I just like straight away, straight away beat. So as you can see here, we're just fighting all these monsters. Ricochet again is doing very nice work for us and Bouncy Wall. It's very, very nice. We're having a really easy time because of this. But if I had any other abilities, like if I didn't have these abilities, I wouldn't be having an easy time right now, even with this much damage. So I killed them pretty fast. But as you can see, those are the dogs. Those dogs are really, really annoying. They don't aim for you. I'm going to pick up um, attack speed boost here. I think we could go for some more DPS. Anyways, um, with the dog guys, ugh, they are so annoying because they don't, they dash way further than the previous dogs that we've had in previous chapters. 
So you just want to avoid their directions and they don't they don't go after you, but you can get in their way really easily. So he does it just focusing on killing all these guys. It's very nice that we have Bouncy Wall, like I said, those abilities. I'm very lucky to have these abilities in this run because usually when I don't have these abilities. Um, for the chapter 5 run, I actually lose pretty quickly because it's just really hard to avoid all the projectiles thrown at you at the same time because of the Grim Reapers, they kind of zone out a lot of areas. So basically, for this chapter, you just want to kill everything as fast as you can. Okay, so you see, as you can see, a lot of projectiles, but I'm killing, every I'm killing everything really fast, trying to get it out of the way. And we're already up to the next boss, which is very nice. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we have the uh, flying pig boss. Now, in my opinion, it was a bit confusing for me because with the with all the projectiles that I have here, and I did lag here as well, which is really annoying because I, I was so caught off by the lag that I, I guess got hit by a bunch of stuff, but he's not as hard as it looks. This, this, this guy's not as hard as it looks. You basically just want to keep to the wall Basically like in a box, like move around in a square box until until he like throws a projectile that sticks onto the wall. Okay, so we got some XP which we don't need. So a lot of walls here, which is really nice. I honestly love it when the levels have walls because with this chapter, you can avoid pretty much everything hiding behind a wall apart from the laser bats. The laser bats are the only ones where their attacks are not absorbed by the wall. Okay, moving on to level 42. Very easy. I actually found um, level 40 to 50 not as bad as level 30 to 40. For some reason, level 30 was just crazy for me. Like, I just struggled so much during the levels in level 30. Okay, moving on to level 43. Just some more death scythe guys and some skeletons. So just remember, the easiest way to avoid projectiles is to watch your character. Um, with the Death Scythe guys, I would say it's easy to avoid the projectiles. I mean, honestly, you should avoid it as long as you're not standing in the same spot. If you're standing in the same spot for too long and they're still alive, you're going to get hit by their projectiles. And you don't want to run back to the same spot. You want to wait a bit until you run back to that spot because you could still get hit by it along the way. Okay, going to level 45. Now this is the last time you can pick up a heal. You don't get a heal before the end boss. So if you need a heal, pick it up at level 45. Okay, we just have some more spinny guys and some more skeletons. So as I said before, the spinny guys do not aim for you. You just got to avoid their projectiles. And the attacks are absorbed by walls. So you can avoid them by hiding behind walls. And we have the doggos again, so as you can see here with the doggos, I have a I have a lot of knockback on my side. So that's really, really nice. So I, I think with this honestly, the scythe, in my opinion, is the best weapon in Archero. It has a lot of crowd control with the knockback, like it really helps out with pushing back away the melee enemies. Just killing everything really quickly here. We're really getting close to the end boss here. Okay, let's see. So having a really easy time with these abilities. These abilities are just amazing for this chapter. Like it took me a long time to figure that out because before I just got single targeted abilities and then I realized, because well actually I got single targeted abilities because I was struggling a lot with the bosses. And then I realized I couldn't even get to the bosses and the monsters were giving me a hard time. So I switched it up and I found what really works for this chapter. I'm not sure how it would go with other weapons as of course though. So. Okay, just gonna finish off these last two bats. See, as you can see, the annoying thing about the death scythe is that it pushes them into the wall and you have to wait until they come out before you can hit them again. Okay, so we're at the end boss. Now, this guy is really hard. So as you can see, he shoots projectiles here. You just wanna avoid on, you just wanna avoid them. And with that, you can see that he's about to do that when he's clapping. Basically with this guy, you have to be very patient when killing him. I did get hit a lot by his abilities and everything. So basically with him, you just want to take like maybe one shot and then move out of the way and then one shot and then move out of the way. So 
depending on what attack he's doing. For example, if he's doing that attack, you can hit him like maybe two times. When he's jumping, you want to run away as much as you can. And when he's uh, when he's doing that, you can hit him a few times as well, but make sure you get out of the way. And when he's clapping, you want to... You can see when he's about to do the, the floor attack. Um, when he claps like that, that means he's going to hit the floor. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is actually the second time that I've beaten him in Archer. Every other time I didn't beat him. This is the second time I've be beaten him because he was so hard. Like I actually had so much trouble with him. And unfortunately with the end boss, because it takes so long to get there, you get the least practice with the end boss. And I have, I can show you a compilation here of just how much I struggled with this boss. It was very hard and I still didn't perfectly hit him. Like I still got hit a lot. So if I didn't pick up the HP boost, I probably would have just died. But yeah, that is pretty much it for the end boss. Um, so basically with that guy, you just want to only hit him once or twice. Probably once to be safe. If you have the death scythe, you could probably do do it twice if you have a different, different weapon. And depending on what attack he's doing, you can hit him maybe a couple of times. But you want to keep moving. In this chapter, you basically want to keep moving and don't want to. You don't want to stay in one spot unless you have a lot of damage, a lot of CC, which is crowd control. And well, if you have the death scythe, you should have crowd control. And you basically want, um, definitely want bouncy wall and diagonal arrows. That really helps you kill things very quickly. And I also just want to add that f the freeze ability is also very nice in this chapter because it can cancel out some of the enemy's abilities with the death scythe. I'm not sure if it works with other weapons, but I will check. With, I will check back on that in another video. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope it's helped you in some way. I'm sorry it took it took me so long to beat this chapter. It was it was hectic. I I tried for so long, but anyways, feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If this helped you out, click the bell if you haven't already. It really I think I'm repeating myself. <laughs> it really helps me out again. But yeah, I'll catch you guys for the next one. Bye. So we have Bolt, Bouncy Wall, and Side Arrows. We're going to start off with Bouncy Wall. I think Bouncy Wall Diagonal Arrows in this chapter is very, very useful and you definitely want it. Let's see. So we have the Skeleton Guy. Oh no, oh no, oh no. There's music sound on this. <laughs>